Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you just the, the basics of c -sharp scripting. Um, we probably won't get our guy moving at the end of this clip and we'll we'll have it ready to go for, for proper programming next session and with a little bit of introductory programming here. So last lesson we finished with basically creating a scripts folder. So we're going to jump straight in to, to this. So we're going to the scripts folder, I'm going to right click and create. I'm going to create a c -sharp script. Uh, I'm going to call it player controller. So watch your spelling and be mindful of the fact that there's no space between the words. Um, it's good programming practice to use camel case, so that is capitalize the first letter of a new word. But don't put spaces in because sometimes computers or phones or whatever you're building to uh, will come up with an error. So just singular, singular naming would be awesome. Um, just to prevent errors down the line. Same as variables. Okay, so although I've created this script, um, it's not really doing a whole lot. I get a preview of what, what's going on in here. So if I double click player controller, it'll launch um, my editor. So we should be using Mono Browser, uh, Mono Developer, which we set up last time. Um, let's have a look. Just take a moment to load the first time through. Um, and we'll see that it gives us some initial starting points. So we don't need to worry too much about what that this is um, in our case. If, if you're going down the line of computer programming, um, you'll look into it. I'm just going to explain some basic components. So essentially everything that happens between these curly braces um, is going to be everything that we're writing. In this top space up here is pretty much the spot where we're going to be putting variables. And variables are where we can assign um, I don't know, questions, values, numbers, etc. They can be either public or private. I'll discuss that in a sec. Next in the start, and these two um, open and close brackets indicate that it's um, a sort of like a subroutine. So when it starts, it'll do something once. Uh, and then update, however, will happen every frame. So repeatedly. And if you've ever played a game where you've had a low frame rate and things are kind of not working out for you, um, it's because it's probably trying to do a whole lot of stuff every frame that's jerking, and therefore you're going to have some issues. Okay, so that's sort of the basic of um, a C sharp script, and we'll look at it obviously further in detail in the next couple of videos. So in um, in Unity, what we're looking at doing is moving our player left and right at the very least. Um, Unity is really cool in that it's got a lot of stuff set out for us. It knows it's a game engine and it knows that we're going to want to have people moving around. So it's got some default things built in for us just to speed up our development. So if we go to um, Edit, Project Settings, and in Input, we can see all of the things that are here by default. So if I click on Horizontal, for example, the name is Horizontal, and so I can use that keyword to dial in to get this value. Um, it knows by default that there's left and right, negative goes to the left, positive to the right, so that's numerically minus numbers, positive numbers. Um, there's an alternate, so the A and D, gravity applied. You can modify that, same as sensitivity, but if you don't know what you're doing, don't touch it. Uh, it's also got built-in support for mouse and um, joypad, same as vertical. So if you're going to, let's say, designing a game for Xbox, you probably need to be paying a bit more attention to what your controllers are doing. And if you're looking into Oculus, there's a few more, or other, sorry, other VR applications as well. You probably have some other buttons that you are going to be dealing with yourself, unless you use built-in packages. Okay, so this input manager is just something that we're going to be looking at. We, we will be looking at changing horizontal and, and vertical. We'll dial down into that. Um, so if I go back to my player one, uh, I've got the transform and the new part was rigid body from last time. And I'm going to use this to, to manipulate, um, sorry, I'm going to use my c -sharp script player controller to prog programmatically change what's going on in here. So I'm just going to double click on this again, just to bring that back up. Awesome. So probably the first thing I need to do is just at the top of my code, um, before my start, but in my main function, just going to declare a variable. So if I call it public, 
and I'll explain it in a sec. It's easy to explain um, when I can show you what's going on. I'm going to call it a public. I'm going to use the data type of float and uh, a float is a number. Um, we've got float and integer. There's two different numbers and we're going to call it. So we've got a declara declaration of whether it's public or private. The data type that we're using and then the last thing is to give it a name. So I'm going to call it move speed again with that camel case. And it's important that every line pretty much will end with a semicolon. If you have an issue, it's a semicolon. If in doubt, check for a semicolon. If I save this, I'm just going to press Control S, and I then come back to my project. Um, not much has changed, so I need to bring my script onto my player. So if I just select my player, I can get my script and drag it in, and you can see the link there already, or I should be able to add component and start typing the name of it and player controller and with the capitalization it's identified the naming so if I bring that in you can see that move speed has a variable area and I could change that if I press play I'm not expecting anything different to change yet yeah, wonderful um, but what it means is on the fly a public um, a public variable will allow me to to modify this or at the very least see details that's not to say that person who's playing a computer game can change stuff we will build out of that, but it is important to know the difference with um, public and versus private, which we'll do now. So I might do a private, and we're going to use that rigid body. So rigid body, and once I've started typing, you can see that there's a whole drop-down list of things that I'm looking at using. So I'm going to do rigid. I'm actually going to type it out because I want to be specific. Rigid body 2D. And note the capitalization. Um, if we don't capitalize it correctly, we might have some issues later on down the line. No, you will have issues down the line. Um, oh, there we go, that changed by default. Um, I'm going to give it my variable name. So that's the data type that we've given it, rigid body. And this is going to allow us to, as I said, link into the rigid body element that we've given to our player. Um, rigid body, I'm going to call it my rigid body and just semicolon. So now that this is set to private, so when I click save, this should update automatically. It'll just take a moment. Just run time, click on player. Yeah, awesome. So you don't see anything extra here. That's because it's set to private. And the idea being that you're only using it the once or if you want to make sure that you don't mess around with it too often, you set it to public. If you're really sure that something is not needing to be played with multiple times, you set it to private. So if I just save this just for example, you should see that another drop on drop down will appear. Okay, so now we've got this my rigid body. Awesome. So we don't need to see that. We're going to programmatically worry about it. So if I just go back to this, uh, I'm going to go into my start routine. Sorry, I'm just making that back to private. Awesome. Uh, in my start routine, what I want to do is just establish um, this link of what I'm doing with this variable. So what I'm going to say is my rigid body. And again, you can see that that text has come up. If I press tab, that should auto fill in. Wonderful. Um, so my rigid body space equals, and now it's in capital, get component, there we go, um, get component, and we're going to use the angle braces, so that's where the comma and full stop are, get component, and we're going to be getting rigid body 2D, and we're going to close th that bracket, awesome, um, and now we need to do two things which are different, so if we look at this void start, what this means is it's a little function is going to happen. We may or may not be aware of what that function is going to be. Sometimes we can tell Unity to do something that it knows to do, and sometimes we're going to spell out what it needs to do. So in this case, uh, it knows what to do. So what I'm going to do is pretty simple. It's just give it open and close parentheses and semicolon to finish. And you'll notice that the space was automatically put in there. So what this is doing um, is pretty much saying that there's a private variable, we're programmatically linking up the rigid body 
that we see with our um, player object to a variable we're calling my rigid body that's happening behind the scenes. Once we start doing anything with the player, it's going to establish that there's a variable my rigid body and it's going to get the components for this rigid body 2D. What it's going to enable us to do in our next lesson is to programmatically um, give it some velocity, jump, etc. Okay, so in the next video, we'll actually fill in somewhere in our update stuff and we'll make our, our player move around. Thank you.